Hello again. So it's time for another episode of the movie being better than the book it's adapted from. And for this episode, I'm going to talk about The Fifth Wave. Now, you have you may have already seen the video I did on The Fifth Wave book series. It's extremely long, extremely in-depth, and basically me just going over how terrible those books are, because they really are. But throughout that video, I also brought up how the movie that was made in 2016, and only covers the first book, is kind of better than the book in a lot of ways, because, like, uh, the, the movie's bad, yes, but the book is just so, so much worse. And, you know, it's basically impossible to talk about how exactly that works without spoilers, so from here on out, it, this video is going to be full of them. But basically, the book is a mess in terms of plot, and the movie cleans that up at least a little bit. So if you're unaware, this series is about aliens coming to Earth and destroying most of humanity in a series of attacks called Waves, and it's never properly explained why the aliens came to destroy people or anything, but, you know, that's what happened. And so the vast majority of the human population was killed off by, like, some earthquakes and some EMPs that went off and a avian flu that went out and killed most people. And then we start following our main character, whose name is Cassie, and she winds up being separated from her brother, who is the last of her family, and then she goes off to find him. And then f from there, the story just falls apart. Stop! Stop! Cassie! Wait, stop! Like, that's done fairly well in the movie, but the book start is... it's horrendous. So basically, the book starts with a prologue, which specifically shows that aliens are coming in and infecting humans so that the humans will grow up and have an alien mind in them and then they'll be on their side. Like, we just know about that from the beginning, from the prologue, and so when it comes up later, it's not really a surprise or anything. Okay? And then immediately after that, we cut to Cassie, and it's after the world's already been destroyed, she goes into a store, she kills a soldier, we get an intro to what her life was like before the aliens came and before everything really fell apart, and then we see how the world was destroyed, and that sounds fine when I describe it like that, but it goes back and forth so much. Like, it'll be, okay, I'm walking into the store, I hear a noise, and then think back to what her life was like before the world was destroyed for a couple of pages, and then I go into the back to investigate the noise, and then think about that for a few more pages, and then start to think about how the world got destroyed and how we wound up in this point, and then, S look, there's a soldier there, I think he has a gun, have a brief conversation, shoot him, and then, like, that's the real end of the prologue, I guess you'd call it. Like, that's the real intro to the story, which is really, really confusing to read. Like, I, I know the way I'm describing it there, it sounds bad enough, but there's really not even a transition between them. Like, it's not as though it'll end one chapter in the present and then it'll go into a flashback chapter. And it's not like there's a line break and then everything's in ital it italics to show, okay, that is a flashback or anything like that. It'll just go one paragraph is one subject and then a completely different subject in the next paragraph. So it is, it is just a mess. And then after that, uh, we just show, again, we go into permanent flashback and we just show everything from like the world being destroyed and her mom dying and stuff all the way up to her being separated from her brother and deciding to go off and find him. And... That's, like, a little better, but it's still just... The beginning of this book is an absolute mess. The movie is much simpler, okay? It just shows Cassie go into the abandoned gas station, find the soldier, shoot him, realize that he was innocent, she didn't need to shoot him, and then be upset. And then after that, it goes back to what her life was before everything was destroyed, and then just everything after that is in order. So it's nothing really different or unique or like avant-garde or anything which the book might have been trying to do but at least I can tell what's going on and you're never sure and you're never wondering if it's like oh is this past present or future because like, like you just know and sometimes that is best sometimes it's best to just be straightforward with these things in fact I would go so far as to say that this movie while it is overall pretty bad the first half hour is pretty good because uh, after that, when we see the whole world get destroyed, we actually see it get destroyed. You 
know, when Cassie's describing it in the book, it it's fine. She's basically just saying, yeah, there was an EMP which knocked everything out, and then they caused these earthquakes which destroyed a bunch of stuff. Whereas in the movie, we actually see her when the EMP comes, and she's like, oh, hey, all the electronics are out. That's weird. And then we see her when the earthquake comes, and she actually gets hit with a small tidal wave coming off of Lake, Lake Erie, I think? I, I don't remember. It's not important. One of the Great Lakes. And we actually see some stuff that happens around the world, which she didn't. And it's an impressive scale, is the thing. Like, you really get the feeling, oh man, the world is, the world is ending. You know, this isn't a local disaster or anything. Most of humanity is gone after this. Especially with the um, the avian flu that comes in and kills people, like you see massive uh, piles of corpses, and you see uh, how like football stadiums and stuff are being set up as like quarantine zones and trying to help sick people and stuff like that. And so you really feel like yes, this is a disaster. This is huge. This is th this is horrendous. And so it actually you feel some of the weight of yes, the world is ending, and these aliens are ungodly powerful. And by doing it this way, we also get to connect with Cassie a little bit and actually care about her. And, well, I can't go into too much detail about that because it's it's pretty simple to do. It's just like, yes, here's a character, here's them living their lives, here's them having some small flaws but overall being an enjoyable person to watch. Like, yeah, this, this is Cassie. It's like so much fun. <clears throat> Should we just take our shirts off right now and, and go jump in? Oh, yeah, certainly. Cool. What would I even say to him? I don't know him, and he doesn't even know me. You're a girl. He's a boy. Your parts no. go together. Oh, God. And so we actually care about her, as opposed to the book, where we feel kind of bad for her for accidentally killing someone, but that's, that's kind of it. Beyond that, she doesn't have much personality. And then, after all of this, both the book and the movie cut to this character named Ben. Now, the thing about that is that in the book, he is mentioned maybe once as this guy that Cassie kind of has a crush on, and then it just cuts to him months after the world is destroyed, he's in a refugee camp, and then he joins up with the military, and it goes several chapters without telling us what his name is, and even once it does, I had to stop and remember, oh, right, Ben, yeah, he's, he's that guy. In the movie, it actually shows Ben for a couple of... Not for very long, but like for a couple of seconds at least, and he he's named uh, at the beginning intro part where it's just showing the world before everything goes to shit. And then later, when it shows him joining the military, we just see, okay, yeah, it's that guy. Like, it's it's just less confusing is the thing. That was the last time I saw Ben Parrish. That's part of the issue with cutting between different POVs. I've talked about that before. But just, like, cutting between first-person POVs is a very delicate process. You have to be careful with it. In, in the movies, it, it's just much easier, you know? And maybe that's not really anything intelligent on the part of the scriptwriters or the directors or anything, but it is at least a baseline level of competence that the book is missing. This is also around the time that Cassie meets Evan, who is, like, her main love interest throughout the series. And... In the book, it's very obvious that he's, an a that he's an alien in a human body. Because again, we have that prologue, so we already know that's a thing. And then we also get a chapter from his perspective where he's like, you know, I see that girl and I want to protect her, so I'm going to do that. And so there's like no tension, there's no buildup, there's no wondering, oh, what, what is this guy's motivation? Is he really on her side or anything like that? In the movie, Cassie gets shot and then she wakes up in this guy's house and he has helped her out and she's kind of freaked out by it and tries running away and it's understandable why she might do that. <laughs> there is tension. We don't know what's going on. She doesn't quite know what's going on. And so when he's hiding the fact that he's an alien and when the audience doesn't know that he's an alien, there is some mystery, and the book, for whatever reason, just doesn't have that. And I really don't even know why they put those scenes in, because you could just cut them out, 
and it wouldn't make any difference to the rest of the book. It's not important for like character development or the storyline or anything like that. You can just cut them out and it would make the whole thing a lot better. So I really don't even know why they bothered doing that. And so when the twist comes in the book, it's not even a twist because we already know that. But in the movie, when the twist comes, sure, it's still pretty easy to see coming. Let, let's be honest. It, even if you never saw the trailers or anything, it's easy to tell like, okay, yeah, this guy, he's an alien that turned good. But it does at least have some weight for the story and it makes some sense why it would have weight for the character as well. Now we also see all of the military training stuff with like uh, Zombie, aka Ben, and Sammy, Cassie's younger brother, and that's pretty much the same in the books as it is in the movie. Like the books just go into more detail with it. It's all kind of dumb if I'm being honest and not that interesting. E easily the weakest part of an already pretty weak story, but I mean the movie's not doing it worse, and at the end when they finally go on their one mission and realize, oh, we're being controlled by the aliens, they, uh, in the book they straight up blow up one of their teammates, or rather he blows himself up because he doesn't believe that the aliens would have implanted explosive charges in them, and then he's like, no, see, look at this, and they push the button and kills himself, which is honestly really funny, but it's not supposed to be funny. In the movie, they just, they just cut that bit out, so that's handled slightly better. Again, this is all just a bunch of things that are tweaked very slightly to make them a million times better. It's not even that amazing, it's just baseline competence. And uh, so after Cassie realizes that Evan is an alien and tells him to f go fuck off, she manages to sneak onto the base where her brother is being held and goes to try and save him. Now in the movie, this, this, I mean this is the climax in both cases, but in the movie this is Cassie's doing. Like, she's the one who came up with this plan, and she's the one that executes it. In the book, it's just Evan came up with the plan, and he tells her what to do, and throughout the whole process, she's thinking, okay, Evan told me to do this. Evan told me to do that. Evan told me to do this. Evan uh, had an idea, and he said, if I run into this problem, I should do this. And it makes her seem like so much less of an independent character, so much less of an intelligent character, so much less of a determined or uh, skilled character. It's like, it's it's just very basic things that are wrong with this. And uh, then we get to the real climax where Evan comes back and helps him out, and then Ben runs into Cassie, and they're like, oh, hey, let's get Sammy and get out of here. And then they blow up the bad guy's base, and, and then it ends on a note of like, well, now what? What do we do? And that, that that's kind of it. Overall, very dull movie. And quite frankly, it's a bit of a mess. Like, it, it feels like not even a complete story. And I don't mean that in the sense that it's part of a trilogy, so there's going to be more to this. I mean, like, it feels like they started a story and then just ended partway through. And even though there is a climax, it doesn't feel like that much of a climax. So the, the whole thing really is just a mess. And even the parts that are handled a little bit better, a lot of stuff is only explored at, like, a surface level. Like, you know, the characters, for example, they're personality and motivations are only explored at a surface level. Like, we know that Ben's family is killed, yes, but we don't know much else about that. Like, we like, okay, I want to kill the aliens because my family's dead because of them. Like, okay, that's, that's about all we know about him. The apocalypse as well, like, it's, we see the world get destroyed, but we don't really feel that much of the ramifications of it. You know, we see people, the remaining people are mostly like hiding out in the woods or they've joined up with the remnants of the military and that's, that's about it. You know, we don't see people trying to gather up and rebuild or anything like that. It's just, yep, the apocalypse has happened. Da -da. That's it. But all of that aside, it, it's still better than the book. It's still better than the book because the book has pretty much all of the same problems, may, maybe worse in some cases. So, and uh, the movie also has a couple of things that are good. Like I said, the first half hour is really solid. Uh, we get to see the world get destroyed. We actually get to be connected with Cassie in particular and some of the other characters. Uh, we really see her relationship with her father, and so it's kind of sad when he gets killed. All that. And just overall, Chloe Grace Moretz has, gives a very good performance. Like, she, she carries that entire film on her back, and the script doesn't give her a whole lot to work with, but she freaking does her best, and she, she really tries to elevate this movie beyond the schlock that it is, but it, even she can only do so much. And 
Same with Liev Schreiber, who plays the villain Colonel Vosh. Like, he's clearly trying, but the script gives him even less to work with than Chloe Grace Moretz. So, like, what what are you gonna do? And to to be fair, that's like that that's an even worse problem in the books. Like, Vosh is one of the shittiest villains I've read in a very very long time. <sighs> really, that that's what this whole thing comes down to. Like, the movie is not good by any stretch, but it's less of a mess than the book. You know, like, I, I I, just don't understand why the books got as popular as they did, because they were fairly big. But the movie, I mean, the movie didn't do well, but if it did well, I would at least understand that. Like, I can understand why someone would watch the movie and enjoy it for one reason or another. Like, I, I understand that. The book, I just, I, I just don't even get it. Like, what, what, what is there to be enjoyed there? There's just not much to it. And um, while, while I was getting my notes together and everything, I was thinking, man, I would, I would really like someone to just remake the books or reboot them or something like that. Just take most of the same basic ideas and character concepts and everything and then just try and fix it. You know, just try and write a series that isn't total shit because of it. And uh, yeah, that, that's about it, really. You know, I, I don't think that you can really go super in-depth and analyze everything about the characters and the storyline and the world and everything about the series, or especially the movie, because there's really just not that much to it. It's a very simple, straightforward storyline, which they still manage to screw up. Uh, it's a very simple, straightforward, or most of the characters are simple and straightforward, and they manage to screw most of that up, but the movie, the people who made it, were clearly trying, and they managed to fix a lot of the issues, so it is better than the book. Alright, you know how this works by now. All the names on here are people that gave me money, and the people that gave me $10 and more are Apo Savalanian, Olivia Rayan, Ava Toomer, Brandon S. Pilcher, Brother Santodes, Christopher Quinten, Datboy805, Embis, Pfizer, Jeremy, Joel, Karkat Kitsune, Kevin Jang, Liza Rudakova, Madison Lewis Bennett, Mel Austin, Microphone, Sad Mardigan, Tobacco Crow, Tom Beanie, and Ve Victus. You guys are the best. If you want stuff like early access to my videos, or just voting on future video topics, then consider sending me money. And if you don't want to do that, then become a YouTube channel member, or just like this video, share it around and stuff. It really does help. And uh, that's uh, about everything I'm supposed to say here, so I'll see you later. Bye.